Let the weight of your glory cover us, cover us. Let the light of your river flow. And let this truth of your kingdom let it rain in us. Let away of your glory. Let away of your glory fall. Eva da 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 basa di 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 Pakuta parada 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 Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Something will happen to you as you sing this song. Just a keyboard. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. 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 There is a cloud of his glory in this place. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it fall on us tonight. Oh, 
Son to the going down of the same, let the name of the Lord be exalted. One generation will declare your praise to another, for you are seated upon the throne, mighty, majestic in holiness. We worship you. Lord, we bless you. We give you all the praise. Majesty. Please go ahead and worship him. This is part of the meeting. When we worship him, he makes his presence manifest. Sing unto him psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Make melody from your hearts to the Lord. Let a song rise from your spirit to Him. An expression of deep worship. We open up our hearts, O oh God, and we connect to your spirit. and your voice and worship his holiness.
give us strange visitations oh god give us encounters this is called koinonia let it be a place of encounter for us tonight Hallelujah. The saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Saints and the angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are. We'll forever be chasing after you. We'll be chasing after you, not just the things you can give. Lord, we'll forever be chasing after you. We'll be chasing after you. We will rise from faith to faith. From glory to glory, oh yes, we will rise from faith to faith, from glory to glory, and we'll forever be chasing after you. We'll be chasing after you. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. Hallelujah. Jesus, we just want you to know that we love you. We love you with everything. We are gathered here every week. Not just to receive from you, but to express our love to you. Lord, we want you to know that we love you. We love you from the depths of our hearts. We are not using you to get promotion, house, cars, success, but we love you. Go ahead and just express your love for him in one minute. Let him know that you mean business with him. You love him. Not just that you want to receive from him, but you love him.
Alléluia. 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 Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Your word is not an opinion to me. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. For the last time, sing it from the depth of your heart. Jesus, Son of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus be glorified. Please sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Just turn to your left and right. Just pat your neighbor on the back. Good evening. And we'll get... Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for tonight, and we thank you because you will bless us remarkably. Hallelujah. We'll just do two things very quickly. Um, we're going to thank God very seriously while you're seated. I'll prompt you for the manifold blessings of the Lord upon our lives and upon this house. We cannot be ungrateful people. Hallelujah. God has done so many wondrous things in recent time. And um, we owe him thanks. The second thing is that we're going to pray for Nigeria in one minute. Hallelujah. Ah, Pastor Shekri, it's good to see you. Bless you. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray for Nigeria. Um, whether or not you are a Nigerian, it doesn't matter. So long as you are in this place, we are very patriotic citizens and we believe in what God is doing. We are going to rise up. Mike, you play the national anthem once and then we'll prophesy into Nigeria and then we'll sit down. Please let's rise. Can we do that? very fanatical about we will contribute our own quota of prayer and prophecy over the nation i believe in this country i believe in what god is doing nigeria is god's firstborn in africa nigeria will return the christ mm. hallelujah nigeria is the holy land that isaiah spoke about it was not just amalgamated by Lord Lugard. There is a prophecy upon our nation. Hallelujah. I want you to know that. If you don't know that, you would think we're just... Um, forget the corruption that you see ar around and all the things that look like there are armed robbers. There are armed robbers in every nation. There are thieves in every nation. There are touts in every nation. There are poor people in every nation. And um, let's take our eyes off these garbages that the devil tries to bring before us. It is true that there seems to be corruption in the system. But then I want you to know that in the midst of this, God is doing something. And we choose to see what he is doing. It's a choice. Hallelujah. Ready? Okay.
Hallelujah. In one minute, let's lift our voice and prophesy to this nation. We speak to the soul of this nation. Go ahead and pray. Right from the presidency, we speak to the soul of this nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Nigeria remains a place of prophecy. Nigeria remains a habitation of the presence of God. Go ahead and prophesy. In the midst of the corruption, in the midst of all the things that are happening, we declare that the Lord is arising like a mighty one in our midst. We prophesy that Nigeria will step into her prophetic destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, that old proverb will no longer be used in this nation. We speak forth, we declare in the name of Jesus Nigeria will be a place of righteousness, it will be a place of peace, it will be a place of justice. Nigeria will be Beulah and Hephzibah. It will be the desire of nations. We prophesy, we speak over our leaders, we speak over the citizens. We curse Boko Haram in the name of Jesus. We declare that the grace of God is at work in this country. Patriotism becomes our anthem in this country. The banner of godliness will never, never be torn in this country. It will be lifted higher than ever. And Lord, we surrender this nation to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, let's just lift our voices and thank God for what he's doing through this ministry. The privilege for us to contribute our quota to the advancement of the kingdom. Lift your voice and thank him for the media ministry, the teachings, the impact, the miracles, the testimonies. We are grateful people. We are grateful people. We return all the thanks and the praise. Thank you for the millions of lives that are changed, destinies that are transformed, souls that are saved, encounters. Thank you for churches and ministries, businesses and lives, families, individuals and territories that have been influenced by the hand of God upon our lives I like us to thank God for it Lord we choose to say thank you we are grateful people we are very very grateful people we thank you hallelujah hallelujah now ask the Lord for a visitation tonight he will change us by the power of his word thank you Jesus hallelujah god bless you please be seated welcome everyone especially our visitors who have come from far thank you so much we honor you may the lord bless you in the name of jesus and for those outside we bless you can we give them a big big round of applause thank you <laughs> philippians chapter 4 please i'd like us to be very sensitive tonight because God is going to be touching us. Um, we'll pray. We'll just share a few things to charge and admonish our hearts. And then we will pray. Philippians chapter 4. From verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Are we there? Let's read. One, okay, it's projected. Um, one to read. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, 
if there be any praise he says think on these things hallelujah um one of the very powerful things about working in the kingdom system is the fact that we have the privilege to understand the way God works not just the results we get from him but to be able to understand the dynamics of his operation hallelujah when you go to a herbalist he is not committed to explaining to you how things work praise the lord he will ask you turn and move backward and you have no right to ask him why you should move backward and he tells you sit down and then he says call the name of whoever you want to kill or whatever you want or the the woman you want to marry or the man or whatever took you to his place call it three times and you have no right to say baba why because if you dare ask why it may cost you that asking alone can bring some sort of punishment are we together now and so when people operate in the world system usually there is a lot of secrecy the process of achieving things in the world is usually kept secret so that um we only see results without understanding the dynamics and the danger there is that it makes only a few people um to be equipped enough to be able to produce those results are we together now the bible tells us that the nation of israel saw the acts of god the results but he said unto Moses, he showed him his way, the dynamics. He guided him through the spiritual principles that were responsible for producing those results. And let me tell you something, your Christian experience is really barren. If all you have in your life is results, without an understanding, a comprehension into the working principles that produce the results. Hallelujah. And so part of the components of kingdom living it's not just to celebrate results this person was healed this person was blessed i prophesied and then there was a result or uh, god opened the door favor came listen anything you do not understand its process you cannot have confidence in it true faith hinges upon understanding for as long as there is a lot of vagueness in our christian experience we will think we are believing in God. But the truth of the matter is that we are just hoping that we are right. The apostle said, but I know whom I have believed. The word no there is not aware. It's an encounter. He's not saying I am aware of him. He's not talking of awareness. I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. That's conviction. I am persuaded that is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. So as we attempt to grow spiritually, remember what I told us spiritual growth is. There are two components that constitute spiritual growth. Number one is the measure of your conformity experientially into the person and the image of the Christ. That's the first spiritual index to measure spiritual growth. The degree to which you are coming into conformity experientially. Hallelujah. The degree to which you are becoming an expression of the Christ. Paul prayed and said, my little children of whom I travail. He said, until Christ be formed in you. So the formation of Christ is the experiential building into your person. And then the release of the fullness of the life, the character, the quality of the Christ. The second component of spiritual growth is your understanding your comprehension of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom it matters that you understand how the kingdom system works hallelujah that way you will be able to function like the christ so when the bible says god made man in his image and after his likeness that's what he was talking about the image of christ is the word glory is the word doxa right in, in the Greek is doxa, in the Hebrew is kabod. It means the essence of a man, the very component that make that man. 
whoever he is. So the Bible says God made man in his image. And we know that Christ is the express image of God. So God created man in Christ. Right? He created man to be a reflection of the word, a reflection of the Christ. When he says he made him in his likeness, there it talks about functionality. That man will function the way the Godhead functions. Are we together now? And so, the way the Godhead creates is the way man should function creatively. The way the Godhead thinks is the way man should think. Are we together now? And so, when we say you are growing spiritually, don't, don't confuse it. We're not just saying you are seeing visions or angels or throwing people under the anointing. You can measure your spiritual growth at any point by first examining through the eyes and the mirror of God's word to what degree you are becoming like the Christ experientially. That's the degree to which the fruit of the spirit is at work in you. The degree to which the spirit man has gained ascendance over the flesh, right? The degree to which carnality um, is, is, is dead from your life. The degree to which you become heavenly minded. That you set your hearts on the things that are above and not the things that are in the world. And then your understanding of the principles of the kingdom. Listen, listen, listen. It is possible to conform into the image of the Christ and never experientially enjoy the benefits. The benefits of kingdom living. You can conform to the image of the Christ, but then it takes a comprehension of the laws of the kingdom for you to be able to walk in success, prosperity, divine health, etc., etc. Hallelujah. There are many believers who love God. There are many believers who are sincere. But sincerity is not the key to victory. Are we together now? It takes more than sincerity to be victorious. Psalms 82 verse 5, please. The Bible says, they know not. So that's the, that's the diagnosis. Although they are mighty men, verse 1 starts by saying, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. And then he begins to question the people. Right? Verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. He says they grow up in darkness. They walk in darkness. And as a result, the earth is out of its course. The next verse says, Know ye not? Do you not know? Have you not come into this understanding that ye are gods? And that all of you, not some of you, not men of God, ye are gods is that true? And then he says, um, um, how, the, how does he put it now? He says, know ye not that ye are gods and... Then he says in verse 7, he says, but ye shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. So the question is, they know not. Neither will they understand. Notice there are two things there. Right? Let me tell you something. Wisdom, listen, listen. Wisdom is knowing what to do. Understanding is knowing how to do it. That's why the Bible says, with all your getting, it will still not profit you. Get understanding. The dynamics of his operation. That way, your success becomes predictable. It may take time, but I guarantee you, for as long as there is the day after a night, your success will be inevitable. Hallelujah. And so as I challenge us week after week, the goal is to help us to gain mastery. Everybody say mastery. To gain mastery over the laws and the principles of the kingdom. So that on the strength of our understanding, we will be able to walk in dominion. You've heard me say it again and again. That dominion is not an impartation. There is no such thing as an impartation for dominion. Hallelujah. Dominion is what happens to you when you come into an understanding of the principles of the kingdom. For as long as you live, you will never have a problem wearing a shirt and a trouser or your skirt because there is a principle. Is that true? 
There are all kinds of tailors all around the world, but they produce similar results because tailoring works by principle. Nobody sits down and says, I think like um, turning the clothes this way. There is a formula. Are we together now? Tonight, I just want us to examine two things as we pray that will help us. I'm amazed, brothers and sisters, listen. I'm amazed at how many believers think that because they are born again, automatically their lives will become that desired heaven on its own. Nothing can be further from the truth. While it is true that salvation gives us access to the fullness of all that Christ has purchased, it takes understanding to walk into the experience of it. The Bible says that God had put all things under his feet. It says, but as it is right now, experientially, we do not yet see all things. Are we together now? And so, so that our Christian experience does not become a circle of frustration, that on one side you are reading your Bible, and you are seeing the blessings and the promises of God. And while it is true that the pivot of the Christian pursuit is not things. We are not walking. We don't just seek God and pursue him just for things. Hallelujah. The goal is not to get things. However, I want you to know that eventually in your life, you will need consolations to be... Um, they serve as an evidence and as a motivation to your Christian experience. Are you following what I'm saying now? So eventually, when your life refuses to bear fruit, it will begin to challenge your convictions about God. While it is true that we love God whether the door is open or not, while it is true that we will serve him no matter what happens, Brothers and sisters, it is best to serve God. See, man was never designed to serve God under pain, under penury, under suffering. This is why when you serve God under those conditions, it's called sacrifice. Because you were not designed by default to function that way. Are we together now? So you must believe that God wants you to walk into the victory, the blessings the prosperity the increase and now sometimes we men of god fall victims um, of misleading god's people in a sincere attempt to make people spiritually minded in a sincere attempt to push people to become spiritual and to bring people to a point where our passion for god is above and beyond everything we we seem to trivialize the fact that god is interested in their success are we together now so we have a, a congregation of people who love God, but they are failures in every way. And then eventually, the reality of their fruitlessness begins to choke their Christian experience. And by the grace of God, everything that you will hear will be within the context of the kingdom and within the balance that will make your life holistic. Are we together now? So you will be taught as always that your love for God will be the ultimate. You cannot afford to tie your work with God to money and car and prosperity and marriage and child and whatsoever. No, 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 no. It will make your Christian experience fake. Are we together now? However, it is God's desire for you to have a consolation in your Christian experience. Say amen. amen. I've taught us again and again that materialism is not having materials. There are poor people who are materialistic. Absolutely. Materialism has nothing to do with materials. Materialism is the influence of the flesh. The influence of things around. When they occupy the place of God. Don't be mistaken that when you see somebody come out of a jeep or somebody wears a designer clothes, that person is materialistic. Far from it. In fact, let me tell you sincerely, most wealthy people conquered money to be wealthy in the first place. Are we together now? So God wants your success and my success. Say amen. amen. But Paul began to give us one key to the 
success principles of the spirit and he says finally brethren let me talk about your thought life paul in many scriptures and the psalmist and jesus himself begins to tell us that in our quest to become all that god has destined for us we must pay attention to our minds we must pay attention to our thought life our convictions and the things that we think about have a lot to do with the manifestation of our reality and again and again the word keeps challenging us to order our thoughts aright are we together now so the bible begins to tell us that if you want to succeed in life your thoughts must be cultured they must be governed i've taught us again and again that your life revolves around your most dominant thought this is very very true that your life becomes eventually a reflection of your convictions right and and so in in psalm 19 let's look at psalm 19 verse 14 the psalmist puts it in a very interesting way two keys that are responsible for our success in life two keys that are responsible psalm 19 verse 14 i, I believe yes it should be psalm 19 verse 14 let's turn there thank you jesus psalm 19 verse 14 let's read it together one to read let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O lord my strength and my redeemer the psalmist tells us to be successful there are two things that are very important number one is the meditations the contemplation the content of your heart and heart there is interchanged in many places in scripture with mind are we together now the meditations of your heart that lead to the words of your mouth can decide your destiny this is very very important hallelujah now um many people have not been taught that their mentality their mindset their ideologies are largely responsible for the quality of their life there are people who pray all the time and and, and now there is a place for you know taking charge of spiritual forces that attempt to cause people to fail and so on and so forth but we must realize that not everything about a man's failure is tied to devils and witches and wizards and so on and so forth there are many of us who do not have the kind of mental state that will afford the holy spirit birth in us the things that will create a glorious destiny hallelujah and so paul is teaching us that whatsoever things he's giving us spiritual parameters that govern our thought life because i tell you this sincerely there is no man that wins the olympic by mistake there's no such thing as success by mistake it doesn't happen hallelujah so it must be intentional and we must upgrade our mindset you can um make make reference to our teaching on pulling down strongholds right that message will bless you because a man is entirely a summation of his mindset and ideology and i told us how that our ideologies are principally formed from our cultures is that true our cultural background we come from different areas with different ideologies about god about success about marriage about life about victory about failure etc when we come to god we don't come so that he will add to those faulty mindsets. We open up our spirits and we ask him to edit. That anything that is not consistent with the pattern of the Christ must leave. Even if it is culturally correct. Is God speaking to us now? So many of us are victims of culture. We have held on to age-long stumbling blocks that will never afford us the opportunity to taste of kingdom success. We hold on to these things, we cherish them so much, and the devil keeps taking advantage of them and destroying our lives. But we must choose to lay them down in the name of Jesus Christ. I told us also that our mindsets are formed as a result of our levels of exposure. The reality you do not know exists, you cannot open up your heart to take it. Is that true? And so the word of God exposes us to the possibilities that exist. 
so that by faith we can open up ourselves and tap into those possibilities our mindsets are also framed from our past and for many of us our past are not good experiences but we have allowed it to become part of the walls in our minds that make us feel we are failures there are many of us seated here who believe that we really cannot do much and so that limitation that has come from our repeated failures of the past creates stumbling blocks and stop us from becoming all that god has destined take seriously what i'm sharing with you because your life is at the mercy of these truths hallelujah are we together let the words of my mouth let the contemplations and the meditations of my heart be such that it is acceptable unto you let it be such that is consistent with your ways if you must live in the kingdom you must subscribe to god's way of doing things see the word of god is not an opinion a believer is not just one who believes the word of god a believer is one who submits to the word of god you submit to it ultimately regardless of what you feel about it are we together now if i can change your mindset then you can prosper i guarantee you i don't care what the limitation is right now but if you refuse to allow your mindset to be changed then there is nothing that can be done to you a man's limitation is primarily his mindset everyone say after me in the name of jesus i receive grace from god for a change of mindset a change of ideology hallelujah this was the limitation of abraham for a long time god wanted to do great things through his life but his limitation became a stumbling block and one time god called him out and said abraham i want to expand your mind attempt to count the stars and he kept trying and failing and you know he gave up and god said this is how your seed will be finally abraham believed god and the bible says it was counted unto him for righteousness hallelujah it's very very important for us to understand um your thought life listen your thought life is a mechanism for creating things in your physical environment your mind is like a machine it's a spiritual component that is locked up in you that is responsible for creation i need you to understand this this is the principle of creation many people have been taught that creation is just about speaking no it's not about speaking alone there are two components that must coexist for creation to happen listen every time you speak what is not consistent with your mind every time you speak what is not consistent with that which is locked up in your spirit you just wasted your time believe me even for salvation the bible says with the heart man believes and on the strength of that conviction with the mouth confession is made and it will lead to salvation are we together now so in that same way the first key to succeeding is your conviction within that internal work that coming to a point where your thought life is completely governed by the word of god we call that state having the mind of christ the mind of christ is not just a mind that is spiritual the mind of christ is the mind that has been adjusted to think entirely from god's perspective so your viewpoint is consistent with the word of god hallelujah we have not been taught the consequences of thinking evil we have not been taught the consequences of having a faulty mindset listen your mind and your thought life will eventually create what you are thinking believe me on this when i tell you believe me eventually and so satan destroys our lives not just by bringing physical tragedies but because for many of us our minds have not been fortified by the word of god we have not embraced the spirit of god enough to produce that kind of alignment and adjustment we allow all kinds of thoughts that's why the bible says the weapons of our warfare are not what carnal in other words this battle is not in the flesh realm it says but they are mighty through god to the pulling down of 
strongholds. Then it says, casting down every imagination comes from the word Yetzar. Creative thoughts that are planted by Satan. Because if it is in your mind and it becomes an obsession, it must manifest. It is not if, it is when. Listen, whatever stays in your mind long enough, I guarantee you, no power in existence will stop it from manifesting. Genesis 11. Abalaba Sita Maria Damara. Genesis 11. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. I believe in you. Let's read. This was a strange man called Nimrod Kush. Hallelujah. That the Bible says they, are, they were attempting to build a city. Look at, please, whether it is spiritual or physical is audacious. Let's just, let's, let's take it from there. Are we, uh, there are all kinds of schools of thought, whether it was physical or spiritual. That's not really the most important thing. The fact that it was a conception in the heart of man to build a tower. Listen to how men think. Goto, come, let us build a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens and let us by it make a name for ourselves. According to them, they did not see any impossibility. Not impossibility of raw materials, not impossibility of workforce, not impossibility of anything. Let's see what happened. Verse 4. Verse 4. And they said, come, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the whole earth. Are you ready? Now watch this. This was Nimrod proposing the idea. Are we together? He was proposing the idea because he knew that if the people begin to think, if they can get to a point where that mental picture is in them, the same way it's in him, nothing will stop them. Verse 5. It says, And the Lord came down to see the tower which the children of men did what? Look at it. Not the tower that they are building. In God's mind, they have finished it. Look at this. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> Nimrod says, look guys, come together. Let us build a city. We want something to manifest physically. But we know that this is, everything is truly possible. So I want to do something to your mindset. Do you guys believe we are able? And they said yes. And God was watching. The moment they agreed, God said the house was finished. He came down to see what they had built. Can you imagine that? That a man had come to a point of persuasion where his thought life has agreed with the word of God right and then the bible tells us that it will be manifested listen listen do you know that god had to scatter them for that plan to fail god did not sit in heaven and say look don't worry these guys are just silly people he literally had to bring confusion to their languages so that they no longer would reason with one another every business empire you see today every successful ministry every impactful believer who has been mightily used by god listen when god comes to you when he calls you the second assignment is not to use you when he calls you listen he equips you and part of that equipment is he has to make you get to a point where your mind resonates with his own and then he can send you anywhere when he called moses he said, Moses, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. And Moses said, huh, I, I know Ramesses. Who do I tell them has sent me? And he said, you are calling for a revelation. I am that I am. I want to show you a bit of the possibilities that are in me. And when he showed Moses, he said, on the strength of this mental picture, go. Your life is at the mercy of your thought. First and foremost your mind 
your thought life. This is the spiritual gateway for birthing ideas. This is the spiritual gateway for birthing creativity. This is the spiritual gateway for manifestation. This happens with the anointing and every other thing. Listen, if you ever will raise a dead, you must have conviction enough to stand before one. Are we together now? When a man walks to a sick body and looks at the sick body, you are seeing that this guy has cancer. Are we together? They are showing you a medical report. Terminal case of cancer. Yet you have the gods to overlook that report. Because there is a higher reality. Your mind has been programmed to see something higher and better. Are we together now? You pray for someone on a wheelchair. Your physical eyes is seeing limbs that are not... I mean, these limbs, even if he's well, he can't stand because he's just skin bones. And you have the audacity to hold his hands and say, stand up. Listen. Sit down, sir. Thank you. Your life is a reflection of the excellency of your mindset. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. The Bible never said all things are possible for everybody. It says to him that believes. Your first assignment is not to look for money to prosper. Believe me. Your first assignment is not to look for a job or a business idea. Please believe me on this. Your first assignment is not to run around looking for helpers. Your first assignment is to stay and rise to a point where your mindset, where you are obsessed with the possibilities, where the word of God literally is like your mirror. The same way when you look at a mirror, you see yourself. Are we together now? The Bible says as we behold him, we are changed. There is a transition. There is a transition. The workers, listen, none of you signed any form that you will come for koinonia this evening. Did you sign any form? But the workers came as early as maybe six, seven, eight, and they started dressing everything. The worship team was preparing. You know why? Because something has happened to them. There is an understanding. They know that God will draw his people to himself and bless them. Imagine if they sat down and said, let's watch. If we see people come, are we together now? I mean, who told the people that there will be an overflow outside? Don't say it's because it has been happening. There was a first day. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. The oil was at the mercy of the vessel. The oil was not small. The vessel was small. So the oil, the vessel made the oil look small. Are we together? The prophet said, go and enlarge your capacity. Borrow vessels. He said, borrow not a few. Enlarge your capacity. The moment there were vessels, the oil started multiplying. I learned this early in life. I've studied Jesus Christ and I've studied very successful people. Every successful person in life, every person that has been used mightily by God, first and foremost got to a point where they were convicted that the ability of the Spirit can work in and through them. Are we together now? Everyone, every single one of them. It took them time, but they stayed until they got to a point where their construction was unwavering. So you hear Job speaking things like, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He says, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. In other words, he knew his change would come. When David was in the cave of Adullam, he knew that inevitably he was meant for the palace. Listen, listen. The devil stands helpless. In the face of a man who has made the word of God his mentality. At that point, Satan becomes powerless. Truly in your life. Because you are no longer governed by the circumstances and the things that your optical eye sees. Your convictions are higher than your physical perceptions. 
So you know that God is able. Now the question is, Satan has surrounded, or the issue is, Satan has surrounded our lives. Listen, he has surrounded our lives with things that compel us to think in a certain way. This is what cosmos is all about. Babylon, the, this godless system, Satan has created structures around our environment. They are called mind control systems. From the movies, are we together now? To the way people behave, right? To spiritual forces that influence men. All of them are aimed at bringing people to think in a certain way. So by the time a lady watches a movie and she finds out that evil is celebrated, in that movie, a lady steals a man's money and they clap for her as being brave. So the devil gives your mind a new definition of what great means. That whenever you are able to oppress another successfully, you are great. And so you receive it. Are we together now? And then eventually, from morning till night, we walk out in the morning and return to our homes with all kinds of ideologies that are not consistent with the word of God. And what we keep seeing in our lives is a physical manifestation of things we did not bargain for. But you thought about them long enough. That thought life became so powerful that it necessarily made us to start speaking it. Listen, there is a difference between speaking just because you want to talk and you are responding to the overflow of the content in your mind. The Bible says every time your mind is full, you must speak. It's not about whether you want or not. Uh -uh. He said, be ye filled with the spirit. Immediately, say, you will start speaking. So the moment your mind is full, your mouth will start speaking. Is God helping us? And so we begin to speak. And while we are speaking, we do not know that we are creating. Every time there is a union between your thought life and your words, there must be creation. So we call ourselves names that we have thought about for so long and we have verbalized. And then our lives inevitably become it. Job said this. He said, the things that I feared most have come upon me. He feared many things, but the one he feared most became his reality. Are we together? There were many things he was afraid of, but the most dominant fear became his reality. So if you want to reign in life, you must realize that part of your assignment with the Holy Spirit and the word of God is to come to a point where you think like Christ. I love Jesus. They brought five loaves and two fish. Say, ah, how are we going to feed these people? Jesus said, no, 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 no. Be silent. Don't corrupt my mindset. I know all things are possible. I'm El Shaddai. That you cannot see it does not mean it's, it's not there. And he told them, no. He lifted it and he gave thanks. And he told the people, he said, go and start sharing it. Sir, what about the embarrassment? Go and start sharing it. And the Bible says, as they were going. See that? This is why you find out that certain things happen to people in certain ways. Your father kept calling you stupid from birth. At 11 years, you were behaving helplessly stupid. Now, he thought he was venting anger. He did not know he was creating. Are we together now? They started calling the lady prostitute. You don't stay in your home. You go to somebody's home. And at age 13, 14, she looks back and sees that ah, she's beginning to have a lustful desire for men. Because every time your mind, I'm not just talking of hallucination. When your mind holds on to it like a conviction and your word speaks, it's like a woman and a man meeting together. There must be creation. I never confess things I don't believe because I'm wasting my time. Are we together? I pray that you will find, you will see light in what I'm sharing with you. When you see this, you will know 
that there is nothing coincidence about a man's destiny every man receives the fruit of what he created or allowed others to create for him hallelujah and so every time your physical life is manifesting things that are not consistent with what the word of god says the key is not to complain the key is to take your eyes away the bible says looking on to jesus not looking on to your circumstances. Not looking on to your situations. Looking on to Jesus. He calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. Right from the time we were 10, 20 in this ministry. I already saw a crowd. I preached that way. I behaved that way. My convictions have never increased or decreased with people. Because what is in me is stronger than what I see. What you are seeing today is what I spoke yesterday. Tomorrow will tell you what I'm speaking now. Are you getting what I'm saying now? No, 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 no. What you are seeing today is not my mindset of today. <laughs> the physical realm always delays. The realm of the spirit is faster. I've gone ahead of this realm. Because there is the power of creation. You can change any situation in your life it may take a while but as far as the heaven is above the earth you can change it the first thing is not just to shout and say god forbid god forbid is not a confession it's just an attempt to be human are we together now there are so many people who make all kinds of statements without the conviction to support it and so there are only statements no creation I will never fail me. God forbid. I won't fail. Yet you, you are seeing it right before you. Because you see, what you are saying and what you are thinking are not the same. So there is no creation. Are we together now? There are many pastors who keep speaking and saying, in the name of Jesus, I have this and that and that, but the truth is their convictions are not true. After the church service, when they now sit down in a non-church platform, they start saying the things they really believe. It's like, oh boy, man, the truth is, Sky, it's not easy. Oh. To be a man is not a day's job, truly, truly. That's what they believe. You see that? That's their conviction. It's easy for us to use all kinds of spiritual words on stage thee and thou and you know god is faithful everybody say god is faithful but the truth is whatever is the pivot of your thinking is what will be your expression even when you are alone ah uh, when i'm alone i say the same thing i look at myself and i prophesy and i speak this is not just positive thinking this is kingdom living are, are we together now it's, it's not just positive thinking brothers and sisters Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Creation is still on. That's what makes us God. Co-creators. But we have lost the art of understanding God's technology of creation. It's not just speaking. It's speaking on the strength of a conviction. That's what produces creation. Hallelujah. What is the sum total of your ideology while you are seated here? Many of us believe all kinds of lies that the devil has put in us. And Paul is saying, finally. He says, I've, I've discussed other issues with you, but I cannot end this episode this way. Finally, whatsoever things are true, don't think lies. What is a lie? Anything the word of God did not endorse. Anything at all. So your situation currently is a lie, as far as the word of God says. <clears throat> See, see, the Bible puts it this way. I love the Bible. It inspires me. It says, listen, it says for our light affliction. Imagine the hell you are going through and the Bible calls it light. For our light affliction. <laughs> then it says, which is but for a moment. It costs 10 years a moment. Now it's up to you to choose to believe what the word has said. For our light affliction, which is bought for a moment. It says, it walketh in us. A far more exceeding weight of glory. Then it says this, why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are 
unseen how do you see what is unseen it never said the things that are unreal it only said they are unseen that tells you all you see is not all there is brothers and sisters there are microorganisms in this room you cannot see them but you keep something keep kunu leave it open for four days and see what it will turn into it reveals to you that there are microorganisms there are bacteria all around to be carnally minded is to be governed entirely by your vision your your physical vision and the devil knows that we are people who walk sensually and so he has taken advantage of our senses to corrupt the reality of this principle you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you you get the glory you get the praise you get the praise you take the honor you take the honor i just want to say thank you thank you god cannot do much with you if your mind does not authorize him to create realities in your life god wants to find expression in your world he wants to do a lot of great and mighty things but he's dependent on your mindset it's not just speaking you speak on the strength of conviction the world our parents our environment right the mindset in nigeria has made us to think in a certain way to an extent that when you fail right when things are not working in your life rather than staying with god and staying true until there is a manifestation you look for somebody who has failed more than you and you justify it you see an ideology it's supposed to be a solidarity a comfort but it has destroyed us so someone comes with a membership of 20 people and then god shows you that i can do more with you and you say, am, am I not better than this guy? At least I'm, I'm 20, he's 4. And by that we guarantee our mediocrity. And we remain there. Never to rise. Never to rise. Let me tell you how I think. I lock up myself in a room or wherever there is and i pray in tongues i soak myself with worship and i take a journey through the word of god because i don't trust anything else believe me any other thing outside the word of god is a lie now it's difficult to convince you because for us a lie is anything you cannot see, you cannot touch, or anything that is not true based on a reference. Jesus said, I am the way. I am reality. Not just an information that is correct. Truth is not what is correct. Truth is what has life in it. Anything that does not have the life of God in it is not truth. That's why it may be a physical reality that you have a lump a breast lump or a growth on your legs but the word of god tells you listen 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 the word of god tells you that that is an affliction that can leave it opens you up to the possibility that it can leave it's up to you to now dwell on this physical reality and die with it listen when remember in, in the bible remember in the bible that's why your eye your eye is very important in your dominion what you see physically and spiritually remember brothers and sisters the bible teaches us that there was a time listen 
there was a time when the nation of Israel were dying and all of that and all of that serpents and so on and so forth and he told Moses to make a serpent and put it up remember and he said if you can just look at it you will be free it matters what you see it matters what you look at you cannot sit down watching all kinds of devilish movies watching all kinds of things exposing yourself to environments that feed your mind wrongly and then you want your life to conform to the word of god it will not happen that way so i surround myself i soak myself with this atmosphere of worship and then i begin to take a journey through the word of god i read the book of joshua and i see what god told me that no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life and like a camera that's it you see that you see what this camera is doing that's what your mind does to everything your mind snaps everything it's up to you to delete every junk in your mind by the word of god your mind is like a camera listen if you check this right now you will see what was captured how many of you look at me how many of you have posed well for a picture you thought you posed well but when you checked what it captured your eyes were closed you would have argued that you didn't close your eyes but at the point of capture, that's it. That's how our minds are. You think you are getting it right. But your, your reality is telling you something is wrong up there. If we are to look at these pictures right now, you may think you were standing very cute. But you find out that you were even like this sleeping. But you can never remember when you did that. The camera can remember. You see that? so you begin to see repeated woes in your life and say when did i do this i go to church every day i pray and your mind says well as far as i'm concerned every time you spoke you spoke things that were not consistent with your mind and the few times you spoke what was consistent with your mind there was creation this is the child oh we are failures it's not for us this and that and that and that it's not for people like us and listen the the most the most the, the saddest part of this is people who are negative about life have you seen people like that let me advise you run away from them quickly even if you grew up together it's time to break away from them there are people who stand close to you in five minutes they are saying something negative it's a devilish attitude Believe me, if that thing is at work in your life, you need a retreat. Use the weekend. Retreat. Sam, come. Um, is it that, is it that in, in Koinonia, people are allowed to just sleep like that while a message is going on? You see what he's thinking. Are we together now? And then you move around and you are looking at... Uh, I'm seeing most Pastor Shegu and his wife do and co. What are they trying to tell us? <laughs> are we together? And then you saw that cake now. You see, they, their minds are negative. They always look for what is not working well. That's why their lives fail. So they try to attract people to themselves who are like them. He said, look, you may be a sincere person, but it must change. There are people like that they never are optimistic about life good morning what is good about the morning that's why the bible says this is the day the lord has made it didn't say the lord and satan this is the day the lord made like you cook food for somebody this is the day that the lord made he said let us rejoice and be glad not complain and be angry listen this is the revelation i have so i come out in the morning and somebody insults me and i remember this is the day the lord has made my assignment for me to receive what he has made is until i rejoice and i am glad listen listen this looks little but i'm teaching you something the bible is saying in the realm of the spirit the day has been made because he says he daily loads us with benefit. It has not manifested yet. There is a condition. Your condition is rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. Because God made the day. Satan also made the day. There is how you receive what he has made. So every time you wake up. 
there are two days in one you choose the day you want to see so i get up in the morning thinking I'm awake. Somebody will be saved because of my life today. Someone will be filled with the Holy Spirit because of my life today. Koinonia is rising higher. And somebody calls you and says, Do you know that I'm, I've not eaten anything? And I say, Don't worry. Our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. This is, I'm showing you how I'm thinking. Listen, I'm not just saying this because I'm, I'm acting here. It has become my construction. It's impossible to entertain any negative thought without a scripture rising as a standard if i lack explanation for the situation like job i will say god is greater god is greater lord i count you faithful the reason why your day is always a tragedy is because there is no rejoicing satan knows that and so from is is from your bedmate right immediately you wake up you just look and say why are you looking ugly like this say, please don't try me I'm, I'm 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 angry this morning i had a, a a dream that is not supposed to be the moment you step down you find out that there's no light for you to bath you see there are orchestrations in your life but the bible says rejoice and be glad it didn't say rejoice because good things are happening rejoice as a rule rejoice as a key Are we together now? How many of you wake up and rejoice? In spite of the fact that immediately you rejoice, somebody just sent you a text and said, I've been tolerating you for a long time. I just want you to know that I had what you said about me. Wallahi, if I did this and that, and you read the text. Listen, listen. It's up to you to allow that thing in your mind and start speaking. And you find out that for one hour you are thinking and resentment is becoming your most dominant thought and you verbalize it oh god punish somebody for me see the bible says do not say before an angel i made a mistake because they execute the words of the saints are we together i never allowed see you can't be great thinking the way people are thinking. Somebody comes and tells you certain things and you say, God bless you. I rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He emphasizes it. He never say rejoice because you are happy. You went to the board and you saw what looked like, um, it didn't look like your destiny and you, you, you just laugh. Not just that you move around and then you stand and say, anybody that tries me will die in this place today. No. creation is happening every day every time unfortunately most of what we are creating in our lives are tragedies and setbacks another aspect to this is anything you do not celebrate in another person you are not authorized to have it in your life oh this is a key in the spirit for as long as I keep talking about Sam, forget about stepping into the worship anointing. I will never. For as long as I trivialize Mike's grace. You see that? Many of us do not have this attitude of genuinely celebrating people. See, see, from this night I'm giving you an assignment. Remove the negativism out of your atmosphere and you'll be amazed to see what will begin to happen in your life. One of the happiest person I've seen in my life is a gentleman called Alex. Not many of you know him. Alex is a very interesting personality. He used to play bass guitar for me before he traveled abroad to study. The only time I saw Alex sick, he said he had malaria. I couldn't believe it because he was laughing. I said, Alex, malaria. No, you are, you are kidding. I've never seen him angry. Believe me, those who know him will tell you. He used to cook. He uses hot pot. He will cook and because I don't eat much, he will just fetch more. and say, Pastor Josh, this is your own. He will just push it and sit down with the pot and eat it. Always laughing. I mean, there was a time we lost one of our sisters years ago. And he stood. Everybody was being remorseful. He was trying to be remorseful. 
and I laughed. I said, this is not you. You are a joyful person. Those kind of people hardly fall sick, if at all. They are very happy. They don't see no masquerade chasing them in any dream because they are happy. They are happy. The praise of God is in their mouth. They are always optimistic. Are, are we together now? Always optimistic. Listen, work with people like that. They are always optimistic. Every time they see challenges, tell them, don't worry. There's a better day. These are the kinds of people to work with. Not those who say, let's sit down here. I told you. Next time when I talk, you will listen to me. No, no, don't work with those kinds of people. There are pastors I will never work with. They are negative. They are cynical. They are always complaining. Why is ministry not working? Ministry is working. Are we together? Never. I will never become a party to those kinds of things. No. God is faithful. The Bible says the path of the just. I'm the just. It shines brighter and brighter. And as a pastor, you have to be careful. Don't carry your bad day and come and land it on your congregation. There are congregations that study the, the pastor. The moment they see the man like this, they know they are in for it. Because now he comes up and see those who are pastors laughing. You may not understand. Sometimes you can really be angry. And those who have annoyed you are there seated. And after singing the praise and worship, you are now looking. And then you say, stand up. And they, they pretend as if they didn't hear it. Did, did I not say, stand I will curse you now. In this church, you people don't give. You don't honor your leaders. People are suffering. Maybe the guy is broke. Things are not working. He has come on stage. The members are not cooperating. You are not sowing. No prophet's offering. No love offering. No seed of honor. The man is frustrated. His wife is telling him, look, let's leave this job. Go and leave this ministry. Go and look for a job. And he carries that anger. And then everybody's in trouble. The drummer is in trouble. The keyboardist is in trouble. Usually it's the worship team that gets to receive the, the lash. You, you know that, right? Let's appreciate the worship team. You don't know what they go through. Really? Then immediately you finish all kinds of... I choose to be positive. It's a choice. I choose to be true. I refuse to meditate on negative things. My life is a blessing. Listen, we're going to pray. I, I just showed us this principle. I will never think on things that are not true. I will never think on things that are not pure. I will never think on things that are not noble. I will, I, no man will preach me into this. No. There's no amount of message. I will not declare my loyalty to anybody who is negative. No. I love you, but carry your trouble and go away with it. I see life only in one direction. Only one direction. The way the word of God says it should be. And no matter what is in my obstacle now, what is in me is bigger than it. It's a matter of time. My physical reality will always, inevitably, oh, that you will believe this. And you will know that that one shoe you have is not all that there is. And you stop feeling negative. You will celebrate that moment because you are waving it goodbye forever. Are we together now? Pressure is a product of a poor perception. This is the reason why many people are under pressure. You are trying to buy a suit of 100,000 or 200,000 now because you are trying to show you are successful. Listen, 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 listen. If you can agree with God up here, Satan is no longer a factor. The only way Satan stops your harvest is to stop your seed time. Once it is sown, it becomes automatic. And the word of God is that seed. You ask the leaders, every time we're having leaders meeting, we don't have time for any sorrowing and mourning. When our sister transited to be with the Lord, we had our time of, uh, you know, just talking, but I challenged them at once. I said, no griefing. Remember my message that night. Why would you preach such a message when people have had certain things? Because her transition is not a tragedy. We know exactly where she is, and whatever it is that the devil orchestrated, we are happy that she's rejoicing. Paul said, for, for me, to live is Christ. It says to die 
he uses a business language gain gain i refuse to be negative there is nothing any man will do to me listen that will make me sit down i'm just negative and say oh god some of you say, oh god take my life you will soon die no 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 it's not a negative prophecy it's a warning it's a caution we do it oh god no marriage no job nobody toasting me listen listen there is an atmosphere around you that is making that happen you won't agree but i'm telling you this there is an atmosphere i've seen ladies please um don't 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 think that i'm using this against any lady i've seen certain ladies that may not even consider themselves to be as good looking and you see the kind of brothers coming because they are optimistic they know i will marry they talk about their children with confidence and you who stand say children care where is the man and then you find out that they sit down and true to it in your presence five people are calling and say agree for me now i'm ready to marry you and you are there with your negative atmosphere human beings have prophetic atmospheres they can repel or bring things to your life right so a guy wants to say hello to you they say turn around and and and, and turn around and say hello to your 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 neighbor and a, a guy walks to you and you carry your anger and bitterness that guy came for koinonia just like you how are you sweetheart sweetheart you don't stop there no. This person that is talking is maybe he's even getting married soon. You now carry your anger. You create. This is why many people don't have friends. Two weeks and the friends are tired of them. Because there is an atmosphere that drives every good thing out of your life. A negative atmosphere. An atmosphere that is, is, is from a wrong mindset. He said, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable you will never hear me say anything negative about koinonia i'm the number one fan of this ministry i only see what god is doing and i celebrate it you will not see me sit down and be talking about another man of god and i'm telling you pastor alpha do you know that we saw blue flower in his church instead of yellow no never never You must become very kingdom minded and positive i guarantee you if you speak on the strength of that conviction things will change in your life i expect people to bless me every day i'm surprised if they don't bless me i expect it it's not pride it's the truth even this night there are people no 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 i this is my mind you you don't expect anything you are even surprised when it comes say for me are you sure i'm the one not to give why can't you listen 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 what makes you think you do not deserve it say i deserve the blessings of god shout it i deserve the blessings of god say one more time i deserve the blessings of god i'm not teaching you carnality i'm teaching you how to walk in victory many people always believe is is the chaff that belongs to them If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more brothers and sisters with your heavenly father gave how much more every time you talk to people there are some of you you talk about people and say what's the latest what's the latest mean what is wrong in the person's life now after six months of not meeting the person are we together now what's the latest oh she has a shop so what's the latest hey, it looks like nobody's even going to say I said it I said it I choose to believe the word I choose to allow it become the construction of my mindset Jesus said this verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he also do and greater works brothers and sisters I believe this I don't know who is not working for and I really feel bad for them but as far as I'm concerned this thing is going to work for me there will always be people coming for koinonia lives will keep being changed we will keep rising from glory to glory when people say there is a casting down for us here there is a lifting up it's by the hand of god the anointing of the spirit will never run dry in this house at every point there is increase 
The word of God will never be scarce. It will never lose its place. Every time you come for koinonia, you will keep being blessed. That name will keep rising. This is my mindset. This is what I believe. This is how I live. In the open and in the secret, in my sleep, this is what I believe. I believe that favor follows me like a shadow. Everywhere I go, even people who do not want me, there is something upon me that compels them to bless me. I expect it. When it happens, I say, that's right. Consistent. I'm not going to betray my destiny with a negative confession. I will not. I will not. I will not. Jesus is glorified consistently in my life. Everywhere I go to minister, they receive the touch of God. I am a blessing. I'm not a liability to any man. I'm not a cost to any man. I choose to believe I am a blessing. Because he said, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed are we together these are the this is is part of the secrets that has preserved and multiplied the anointing of the spirit upon my life don't you think it's just prayer and fasting alone there is an understanding that keeps the anointing comfortable in me nothing in me will choke the anointing out of me because i have learned to create the atmosphere i have an unction from the and i know that's why you will keep coming. You will drag yourself from your room by an agency you cannot explain. It's called anakazo. It's at work. It's the compelling power of the spirit. Supported by a healthy mindset. I will never be a failure in life. Me and poverty are signed up forever. I waved it goodbye. It waved me back. There's no possibility of meeting again. I lift my hands in worship. As I sing praises to your name, I lift my hands in worship. As I sing glory to your name, Son of Man. What seest thou? He said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, As far as your eyes can see, to you I will give as an inheritance. He said, Abraham, from where thou art, it's okay that you are where you are, but from where you are, he said, Lift up your eyes. From where you are, lift up your eyes and see. Northwards, southward, eastward, westward. He said, As far as your eyes can see. Brothers and sisters, I see far. I see far. Are you seeing your today or you are already seeing what God has designed? Listen, if you see it, brothers and sisters, you can carry your 250 naira trouser and move happily because what people are seeing is a mirage. They will soon see what is true. The Bible says the things that are, on, that are seen are temporal. Temporal. I see a ministry with prosperity and abundance. I see a ministry touching people all over the globe. I see a ministry winning souls and saving lives. I see a ministry blessing people like, an, like a tree, like an edifice. That's what I see. That's what I see. I see a family of peace. I don't see myself being a wicked father. I don't see myself being an irresponsible father. I choose to be a good man. I, are we together now? It's a choice. This is what I see. I see Koinonia having the best workforce any ministry can have. That's why I celebrate them. That's why I honor them. You will never turn and see me embarrass the people I'm embarrassing myself. I love them and they know it. I'm not embarrassed about my love for them. Because they are gifted people. And I've created the atmosphere for them to be motivated by love and revelation, not force. Is God speaking to us? You've got to culture your atmosphere. Sister, your, the next level of your life is at the mercy of your mindset. You've got to change it tonight. And say, look, the Bible says male and female, he created them. There is somebody who loves me. I may not see the person, but there's somebody who appreciates me. 
forget about the one who came and looked at you and said you think you are fine let him carry his trouble and go but you know what you are looking at i am a mother who will birth prophets and apostles and preachers this is the mindset are we together now you look at your academics and it looks like it's nose diving and you say i know my redeemer live it and people say let's be real be real you say this is my reality i reject that thing you are trying to tell me my reality is what the word of god says and i choose to believe it 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 ah let the redeemed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so let the prosperous of the lord say so let the great of the lord say so i choose to say it because i believe it it says the the righteousness of faith speaks in this wise on on the strength of conviction you must speak so we are not just praying blindly oh i know my life is blessed and you just turn and say oh boy we really well let's just continue my life no 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 that's not conviction that's not conviction see in my little work i don't boast of being a general in the knowledge of god but i know something about him he is faithful this attribute of god i can tell you experientially god is faithful god is faithful i've seen his faithfulness that's why i take out time to celebrate him those who put their trust in him never go disappointed i guarantee you if you were disappointed you did not put your trust in him if you really put your trust in him you will watch your way maker step into what looks like there's no way and begin to create ways for you the night time will look like morning will never come but when he arises like a mighty man that he is you will see him move my own is to keep agreeing with him lord i agree with you i may not see where i'm going but i know that with you is a glorious destiny while you are saying it they, they laugh at you no problem they should keep laughing because when it happens they will say he said it i will never be ashamed of speaking the word of god many of us are embarrassed about it so you believe it but you keep quiet you say lord i thank you because you are changing my story and and you now look and they, they laugh at you and they say mr man look let me tell you if i'm god i will hear your prayer you that you are praying see when they tell you that kind of thing you feel bad ah i shout it to the mountain top we are going from glory to glory from grace to grace in the name of the lord jesus christ that's what the bible says and that's what i believe that's what i believe let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus the word led there is permit this is a very simple message tonight that is an attempt to challenge us to know that our thought life has a lot to do with our destinies when you come to my place you don't see anything that reminds you of the devil and failure nothing nothing everything reminds me of heaven and greatness i have a little board where i wrote three scriptures one about the anointing one about favor the other one about about increase or greatness and i love it some of us are negative we must change negativism will make you birth things you do not want please believe me pastors our minds must be stayed on what the word of god has said there may not be money in the account of the ministry there may not be this and that but i choose to believe i'm not just confessing blindly but you choose to believe my god is faithful my god is alive hallelujah we are going to pray and when it's time to pray i want us to believe it as you pray you pray away these negative things that we have allowed the devil to put in our minds the bible says, casting down every yet there are imaginations that have exalted themselves above the knowledge of the christ you went home this morning and there was no maggi to cook food you went home and there was nothing there was just pepper and you look at it and say this is a mirage my god is faithful what about the welfare i'll be sending to foundations tomorrow i see myself doing it papa oyedeko way before he had the money to buy any designer shouted he said yeah i can never be poor he saw something 
he saw something to an extent that he was in america and he said god sent him down to come and make the people rich with no evidence on your own part brothers and sisters i believe him i judge him faithful he has been tested through different dispensations and he has been found faithful my life is too small to judge the faithfulness of god from glory to glory you are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me prophesied glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for our light affliction which is but for a moment that financial scarcity is for a moment brothers and sisters that sickness is for a moment that limitation is for a moment he said though weeping endures for a night he says joy 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 comes with the morning you are not the first to see carryover on the board if you wore a matriculation gown you will wear a convocation gown oh come on now there is nothing happening to you that is new that's why i said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord that's where you will hear testimonies that are worse than yours and how god delivered people out of it you are not the first to not have food to eat i shared this thing humorously i'll never forget one one time in my life i was so broke things were so bad i bought bread well for, for some people that's prosperity now i bought bread and then with granite and just choked the thing inside and i was just eating and rejoicing i'll never forget locking myself and dancing i was dancing because i saw people blessing my life i said the anointing in my life is an endangered species it's impossible for me to be ignored it's only a matter of time when i said that there was no hope of anybody bringing any seed to naira to say take he is taking you sister you will rise like an edifice i'm telling you it's from glory to glory you are taking me personalize it as we prepare to pray glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory Shout it after me say in the name of Jesus all I see around me is the goodness of God is the mercy of God is the favor of God is the faithfulness of God all I see around me is increase glory beauty favor I reject every thought that is not consistent with the word of God I am a blessing lift your voice and begin to prophesy lift your voice and prophesy we cast down by the blood of the eternal covenant every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of the Christ we cast it down we cast down thoughts of failure we cast down thoughts of limitation. We cast down thoughts of inferiority. Oh, 
Oh, hallelujah. We are well favored. The blessed of the Lord. Moving from glory to glory. We think only on things that are pure. Things that are true. Things that are noble. Things that have virtues and praise. I refuse to see challenges. I see the faithfulness of God. I see the mercy of my God increase on every side, on on every side, favor on every side. Make sure you're praying inside and outside. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I tear down. Every negative thinking. Every negative mindset. Every thinking on failure. Every thinking on mediocrity. Everything that makes me look like a nobody. I tear it down in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, I challenge it. Challenge cultural mindset. Challenge the speakings of men over your life and destiny. For as a man thinketh, so he is. For as a man thinketh, so he is. Out of the abundance of your heart, of your mind, of your spirit, your mouth makes proclamations. I reject failure. I reject failure. I reject limitation. I reject failure. I reject limitation. I reject failure. I reject limitation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, listen. It said, we having the spirit of faith, as it is written, I believe and therefore I speak. It said, we also, like faithful Abraham, we believe and we prove that we believe by speaking. Are we together? Everything you know the word of God has said for you, you are going to speak it. You are not just speaking, you are creating. Are you ready now? Lift your voice and prophesy. Oh, I'm the head and not the tail. Come on, create realities. Above and not beneath. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him from them all. No man is able to stand against me. All the days of my life, my path is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I am like a well-watered garden. The smell of my life is like the field that the Lord has blessed. Increase on every side. Favor on every side. Glad tidings on every side. Prophesy. Prophesy. I declare in the name of Jesus I'm rising from one level of glory to another Gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising where I've been deserted so that no man will go through me I become an eternal excellency a joy of many generations I'm like a well watered garden I am planted in the house of God and I flourish in the courts of my God in all age I am fat and flourishing. I'm like a tree that is planted by the riverside that yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Everything I do prospers. 
everything I do prospers. There is an unction upon my life that make things to work. Everything I do prospers. He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns. He reigns. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he's standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns, he reigns, our God is an awesome. One more time. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns, you are standing by my side, you reign, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns, the last prayer point. Listen, the Bible says, even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. Called those things that be not as though they were. Called those blessings that be not as though they were. Called those favors that be not as though they were. Called those miracles. Called those connections. Call it those destiny helpers that be not as though they were. Call it those new levels that be not as though they were. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy. Call them into your life. I call for destiny helpers. Pray. I call for prosperity. I call for increase. I call for favor. Call it forth. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you have an anointing upon you. Call it forth. Call for that miracle ministry. Call for that healing ministry. Call for those new levels of the prophetic, new levels of the apostolic, new levels of increase. Call for that direction. For the new level of life. Call for those ideas. Call for those strategies. For the next level. Call for those connections. hallelujah let's add one more prayer point listen the bible says if thou shall say not if thou shall wish on the strength of your conviction if thou shall say to this mountain not any mountain a specific mountain if thou shall instruct it be lifted from hands and cast into the sea and he says you do not doubt in your heart you will receive you will have i like us to speak there seems to be challenges in different areas of our lives i'm not ignoring their presence i'm only telling you they can change right now open your mouth mention the mountains and tell them the lord rebuke you the lord rebuke you the creator the owner of the heavens and the earth go ahead migraine headache the lord rebuke you 
poverty the Lord rebuke you delay I say to you be lifted and cast into the sea setbacks the Lord rebuke you come on pray speak to that mountain this favor the Lord rebuke you stagnation the Lord rebuke you barrenness the Lord rebuke you cycles of failure the Lord rebuke you hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus from today I choose and I decide to be positive from today I stop seeing failure I stop seeing limitations I stop living a life of mediocrity from today I declare that there is an anointing upon my life there is greatness upon my life the hand of God is upon me I'm not ordinary from today I declare that no mountain will be able to stand before me the wisdom of the spirit is at work in me creative ideas are flowing through me in the name of Jesus when men say there is a casting down I declare that there is a lifting up my story will be from glory to glory I reject negative reports I do not receive them in the name of Jesus when this becomes the construction of your mindset I guarantee you your life will be a wonder to you and to all those around you they will see an ordinary man but you will see the results of God hallelujah come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden let's read on together and I will give you rest it says take my yoke upon you and lean of me for I am meek and lonely in heart and ye shall find rest for your souls he said for my yoke is easy and my burden is light I want to admonish us tonight very briefly on the subject of peace um, is one attribute that is grossly lacking in the world today when you put on your television all you hear is very bad negative news this person bombing this nation this person doing this when you come to our own nation all kinds of stories and um, if we do not learn how a believer is supposed to live especially in our world today we will depress ourselves we will destroy ourselves are we together now our hospitals are full of people who have inflicted themselves with needless diseases the rate high blood pressure used to be a disease for old people but right now you find teenagers in the hospital with high blood pressure stroke and all kinds of things the turbulence of living in today's world is catching up with so many people depression swallowing people up there are so many people who beginning from the first of this month probably will not rest until the first of january they are hoping to get the money to buy the cow for christmas the rice some of you are depressing yourself over your transport <coughs> excuse me your transport fare back home 
and all kinds of things listen let me tell you something peace is one of the cardinal representations of the presence of the kingdom the bible says the kingdom of god is not in meat and drink are we together but in what righteousness peace this peace is not just a state of quietness it's a state of rest that's what jesus said he will give he said come on to me and i will give you rest it's from the word shalom it's not just a a state of non-disturbance it's, it's a state of rest the psalmist put it in a very beautiful way he says um he restores my soul he says he leads me beside the still waters the more of a leader you become the more you will see the need for peace in your life and the need to be an advocate of that peace lord make us instruments of your peace where there is let your love increase lord make us instruments of your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall see when we are your instrument the first revelation i want to give you about peace and a state of rest is that it is a choice peace has nothing to do with what is happening around you listen listen Peace has nothing to do with the external environment. There are so many people who tell you, I don't have peace because I don't have money. How can I have peace? I don't have peace because I'm not married. I don't have peace because there's no admission. I don't have peace because I have a carryover or no job or no child. Um, Satan understands that men are carnally minded. Are we together? He knows that the impulses of the carnal man is based on the things around him and so he takes advantage of the happenings in our lives all right and then brings us to a point where we cannot enjoy this shalom this restfulness there's so many people worried you see young people just sit like this and you ask them what they say life and you're wondering what is making that person so depressed what is life the only set of people we believe should have peace are those who die that's why we tell them rest in not in joy not in love because we have informed ourselves that peace is only for dead people once you are alive in this world we have programmed ourselves to believe that it is strange for a man to be a peaceful person peace is not quietness peace is not lack of noise no peace is a state of rest a settled state of rest that is based on the revelation of who god is and the integrity of his person hallelujah believe me you have mastered the art of living if you sustain a technology in the spirit to generate peace regardless of situations and circumstances at that point you are guaranteed to live long everyone say peace one of the greatest blessings that jesus brings to us is peace not just salvation but peace you can have all the money in the world and with it will come multiply troubles there are people who were more peaceful poor than they are now millionaires but cannot sleep are we together now have you not read what solomon said 
he said here the conclusion of the matter he said of reading many books there is no end and much study is a weariness to the soul he said but this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and keep his commandments then he says this is the whole duty of man it's too much in this life to disturb your peace every 24 hour in your life is full of enough trouble to jeopardize your life you don't have to be a bad person the world we live in from the person who greets you in the morning to the one you quarrel with before sleeping there are so many people who cannot sleep you ask them why they say kai but i'm, I'm a lenient person abi they are treating me too much in this life this is what they are thinking about there are ideologies that have robbed us of the peace of god the bible says that peace surpasses all understanding it's not scientific you don't calculate it is part of the true representations of a spiritual man a spiritual man has sustained a system in the spirit to be peaceful a state of rest Kai, the way people worry the way people depress themselves is a dangerous thing god gave me this word that in this season it's important for us to come once again into this covenant of peace nothing missing nothing broken nothing that is an emergency enough to rob you of that joy and that restfulness that comes in knowing who Christ is hallelujah our world is full of worry everybody say worry Jesus dedicated a whole chapter Matthew chapter 6 talking about worry the bible says do not worry listen do you know why people lose their peace what to eat what to wear are we together and all the mundane cares of life from marriage to children to money to lack of it to too much of it to human beings there's too much to rob us of our peace husbands have lost relationships with their wives because of the cares of this world lack of peace many homes today have become habitations of worry and stress the tension that you see in the life of people is too much but there is a system there is a technology in the spirit that can keep a man restful May that be your experience listen i'm telling you if you are not a man and a woman of peace you are not walking in the experience of the kingdom it has nothing to do with whether you have money in your pocket or not many of us have tied our peace to naira and kobo so when you check and you find hundred thousand when pastor femi gave the testimony of the millions coming i saw the relief it's not your money but just the the fact that money is available gave a lot of us that sigh of relief and i felt very disappointed if you allow money to define your peace or otherwise you make yourself a slave to satan how many people smile only at the end of the month have you seen the way people are happy when they are slotting their atm even if there's nothing just the consciousness that i'm around money it's a very demonic thing listen listen this is the last teaching for the year it's a very demonic way to live you cannot tie your peace to anything in time because it will kill you fast your peace must be tied to a person not things your peace must be tied to a person his name is jesus oh i like joe come on the bible tells us that job when everything whether he had it or not of course he was human but the bible lets us know that job the, the bible says he sinned not with his mouth peace when you check your cgp and you see that everything works out fine then you have peace look look at how worry is killing so many people it's one of satan's greatest arsenal in our day worry anxiety depression
Hear what Jesus said. John 14. John 14. Are you getting blessed tonight? John 14. Verse 27. John 14, 27. Can we read it? One, two, read. Not a bank account. Listen. Peace. I live with you. So that you are not confused. Not peace that comes from money. He said, my peace. There is a type that God gives. There is a type that the world gives. The peace you get when you receive salary. The peace you get when your insecurities are gone. People consult witches and wizards today because of lack of confidence in God. Insecurity has depressed men. Insecurity causes lack of peace. He said, my peace I give to you. He says, not as the world give it. That means there is a kind of peace you get in this world. Peace that is tied to things. Are we together now? And so there's depression. Everywhere. You come and you find out that there's no light. Oh, never. Eh? And you are angry. And the devil says, that's right. I have found out that circumstances can control the peace gauge of this person. And somebody just annoys you. You receive a very, very nasty text from somebody. And while you are meditating upon it, you hear that, ah, mama is sick at home. And you sit down and say, Kai, what is this life about? And Satan says, this is it. This is exactly the state I want. Because every time, righteousness, peace, and joy cohabit, the kingdom must find expression there. And so Satan knows that every time I can take one of these factors away, it's impossible for that person to experience the kingdom. Do you not know that with all your depression, five minutes without your breath, and there's nothing to talk about again. Truly, human beings are really foolish. The word of God gives us wisdom. You find out the way we depress ourselves over several things. I once met a gentleman and I saw him so worried. I said, why? He said, at my age, my father had a car. Hi! And so... And so I told him, I said, so what does that mean? He said, can you imagine? Ah, I can't make myself a slave like that. Even if I'm going to think, let me think of something noble. Constructed metals stopping you from sleeping in the night. Is that not idolatry? Are we together now? Think of the things that depress us, brothers and sisters. And you find out that at the root of them, do you know that most of the things that are free in life, they are the most important things. The things that God knows that money cannot buy, he gave you freely. The air you breathe, the blessings of relationships, the gift of salvation, most of the things we depress ourselves about, the truth is we can live without them. We have chosen based on an ideology to pressure ourselves. Look at the lovely sister that came to share about her phone getting bad. How many people will not sleep today if arm robbers take, well, not arm, arm robbers don't steal phone. I'm, that a thief, anybody just carries your phone. This gets missing. And you see them moving around. Where is my phone? They wake up by two. They wake up by three. They go to Zaria City. I must find out who did this. Peace. Jesus said, my peace, I live with you, Koinonia. Not as the world gives. You frustrate Satan when you have found a system that does not disrupt your peace. You have found a system that maintains your rest. Hallelujah. When Satan sees that nothing in time can affect this state of restfulness, we hate because we do not have the peace of God. We depress ourselves. We are sick. 
sick and sick and sick people going to the hospital the doctors cannot find anything because they are depressing themselves you you are so depressed you fall down and not even know you're falling down somebody says stand up and you say you mean i fell down what were you thinking about at what age I refuse to allow anything in time it's a choice I reject it I refuse to allow anything in time corrupt that restful state it's a state I've found that is only possible in Christ a state of rest you will never know this peace if you are outside of Christ there is a revelation that brings you to this peace let me tell you what that revelation is if God does not open a door it cannot be opened Ah. and if God opens that door it cannot be closed I have learned by experience that worry does not solve anything it only complicates your life and your problems how many ladies you see them 25 depressed why husband what is that you are so passionate and depressed over a husband the day he comes you are even annoyed that he has come Do you know there is a way you can worry over something? it does not bless you even when it comes the worry is too much even the miracle you no longer celebrate it jesus said my peace i live with you give it to us again media my peace john 14 27 my peace there is a kind that he gives It says not as the world gives let not your heart be what what is the opposite of peace a troubled heart he said let not your heart in other words permit it not choose to refuse your heart from being troubled he said neither let it be afraid these are the things that choke the peace of god fear fear the fear of the future how many young people are afraid of the future what will my life become you are afraid of getting admission you are now afraid of graduating you are afraid of getting a job you are afraid of not getting one ah. he leads me and guides me to the city of Papa. he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Anxiety is something that is, is okay with the natural man. It's part of our build up as natural men. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. Anxiety. Right? anxiety anxiety has depressed people it is that lack of peace anxiousness anxious about everything oh i want to know what tomorrow holds i want to know what this holds and we we go into all kinds of ungodly strategies because we are afraid how many parents have gone to make sacrifices for their children tell me what the future of my child will be will he be great will he not be great tell me this and they say okay go and bring a cow go and bring a ram i want to know i'm afraid let me know if tell me if i will live up to 10 years Abba. there is a state of restfulness that when you wake up in the morning you give him all the praise and you say thank you lord for peace you hear news that is depressing and you say lord in all things I cannot explain what has happened but lord i thank you i i may not know the details but one thing i know is that you are faithful you are faithful for the things you've done for me for the life you've given me you draw me close to you Get it. 
There's too much anxiety in our world. We are afraid. We are insecure. Right? We are troubled over nothing. Watch students when result is about to come out. Something that will be pasted and you will know. Anxiety makes people to be roaming around. They see a lecture and they are good afternoon, sir. Did I pass? Just be patient. Something that in the next 10 minutes will be pasted there and will be left there. Anxiety. Do you know anxiety can preempt you and open up seasons that was not supposed to be open? Anxiety can make you do things. You can go ahead of your destiny to your detriment. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And people look at you. If you are a man of peace, you must be strange. Because people look at you and say, Ah, is it not you? They said your father died. And you say, Well, I cried. But to him be all the glory. Say, No, no, no. Let's go and find out. We must trace the root of this. And he said, God is faithful. <sighs> you are rejoicing and they tell you, one million naira has entered your account. He you said, I rejoice, but it doesn't make any difference. I am still restful. And God says, so the one million, you say, well, I'm happy. It doesn't change anything. And the devil says, where in the world do I get this person? How come you have a constant state of rest, regardless of what happens? You are in a relationship with a guy you are happy planning your wedding and he looks and says i'm not doing it and while you cry he said lord you are faithful i may not have him but i have you give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late lord give me you lord give me Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Listen, many of us do not know the value and the, the treasure of having Jesus Christ. I know we, we profess it, we claim we know, but the truth is, it's not in our lives. The, our, our unrestfulness shows Jesus there is something that is higher than him in our life. Listen, if I give you one million sam right let me use money so that we understand if i give you one million sam and you see five naira falling on the ground will you leave the one million to pick it if you leave the one million to pick it what does that mean it's impossible for you to say i value this that's what that's what is responsible for the turbulence in our lives you have the greatest gift and you throw him away and you are looking at other things that are mundane because in your mind although we claim through our songs that he is everything but the truth of the matter is that our passion and obsession about things of a lesser value show that they are out they are truly the gods in our life when a man has jesus christ listen please hear me i know we live in a society that Things what I'm saying is old school when a man has the Christ and the revelation of the operation of the kingdom you have the greatest gift in your life brothers and sisters whether in plenty or in little you are a man of peace how many gentlemen are about to be bad fathers because their joy and their peace is tied to things around the moment the man is promoted everybody receives the joy the moment he fights with somebody in the office everybody is going to receive a share of that anger that's a bad life i don't have enemies in my life believe me i cannot hate a man i know this sounds arrogant it's not the natural Joshua Selman, I'm human, but I cannot. That quality is no longer in me. The light of God has consumed me. I found a key. Love never fails. When was the last time they taught you this? When they were teaching you on an antidote against failure? Did they ever teach you that love 
never what does never mean there is no possibility hmm. love so i live a very restful life if i go back and i find my place burned to ashes i will look at it and say wow the only pain is i'll say i did not carry my books where i write the visions in my life but in five minutes i'm rejoicing satan has lost the art of wearing me i i humiliate him with my peace hmm. are we together i can sit down with a cup of gary and rejoice the same way i will sit down with turkey i can sit down in a five-star hotel and rejoice the same way i will sit down in a mat if that is not your case you are already in deception the devil is about to hack your life into pieces i will never no 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 whether i'm what i'm wearing a watch of hundred thousand or wearing a rubber watch of 50 naira it does not make any difference as far as peace is concerned are we together whether you are wearing a shirt of one million or you are wearing a shirt of 10 naira it doesn't make any difference never allow the things around you to define your state of rest you are not a christian you are not a true christian i'm telling you this when that happens i have found life i have found peace i'm not teaching you to be irresponsible but i am telling you you master living when you learn to be peaceful that nothing in time can disrupt that restfulness whether in tears or in joy, whether in plenty or in little, you have learned to maintain a spiritual equilibrium. There is a, there is a, a spiritual buffer. Nothing will take you out of that state. You are a true spiritual man. Some of us are probably seated right now, depressed. I want to travel tomorrow. God knows I need 2,000. What I have is 500. Because of one five, you will not sleep. And your not sleeping will not bring it. You see the trouble? Worry was never designed to bring solutions. It was designed to depress you. If I don't trust myself, why can't I trust you? If you don't trust yourself, trust God. my peace i move up brothers and sisters i am amazed every 24 hours i watch people and i am shocked as they are at their ideology why do people think this way why can't they be peaceful why won't you choose to be peaceful listen some of you look at you are not even so old but look look at the way your life is depressed worry and anger and hatred always cynical always on the negative side talking about everything that is not working in your life and the life of people why don't you change what you see why don't you change what you see I don't see negative things all I see is the faithfulness of God in my life all I see is the mercy of God he is the goodness of God in my life God has been good to me if he never blesses me in this life he does not owe me anything I owe him my life and eternity that's how to live that's how to you kept 10,000 naira, I got missing. You are crying. You are yelling. You are quoting scripture. The prayers you would not have prayed to bring you into intimacy. You pray for two hours and you start checking. Oh God, your word said, even God who called the dead and called the things that be not as though they were. Lord, me, I'm saying this thing is my own. It must come. I'm telling you, it's not the prayer of faith. It's the prayer of selfishness and idolatry. The greatest gift I have in my life, listen, is not the anointing. The greatest gift I have in my life is not money. The greatest gift I have in my life is not people. The greatest gift I have in my life is the presence of Jesus. Ah, in life and in death. 
The worst that can happen to me is that I will die. You will cry for seven days and say, ah, ah he taught us about long life. It doesn't matter. I'm God. <laughs> and at the end of it, it's peace. Many of us are already on our way to produce bad families because of depression. What is wrong? No money. How can I be happy? Are you not seeing what is happening in Nigeria? Buhari's government is this and that and that. How is it providing for your needs? Have you not read, my God shall supply? Leave that one, Jare. We are talking about real issues now. You are not a Christian. A true believer, listen, a true believer is one who has staked his life on God's word. I believe the word of God to death, to death, to death. I believe the word of God. My life revolves around it. I will never allow anything in this life to depress me. It does not have that ability. No. If I'm told today that any of my loved one is dead, God forbid, I will cry. But in it, I will get up. And the only song that will come out of my lips is the song of his faithfulness. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faith. We are saying, Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Listen, create a limit for the effect of the things in this life as far as your relationship with God is concerned. The presence of Jesus is more than gold. It's more than a billion dollars. The presence of Jesus is more than koinonia. It's more, I will give up koinonia 1,000 times for the presence of Jesus. I will give up anything, and I mean it, in this life. I would give, give aside every accomplishment and everything for the presence of Jesus. That's the gift I have. I, you hear people say, ah, my reputation is at stake. I don't even have one. Ah, I don't have one. I'm telling you, my reputation is his reputation. I'm too young to kill myself with that kind of ideology. I have no reputation. me thank you i want you to get a revelation tonight inside and outside as we wrap up this year make a choice that for the rest of my god-given life i choose peace i choice no matter what happens in my life i made that choice i choose to be happy people see you and say you are always laughing then they come to your house and find out that the only thing there is water there's no Gary. And they say, so why are you laughing? What's the laughter for? The laughter is because you have come into oneness with one who is greater than anything that can come. See, let me tell you, please, please. Lose the, the affection you have for things. You hear me say this all the time. You must get to a point in your life, koinonia, where nothing in time has the ability to steal away the presence of Jesus. When John, or no, not John now, when Peter was about to die, they were about to kill the body. Right? They put him on a cross and he said, no, they cannot crucify me the same way they crucified my Savior. Look at a man. He said, turn me upside down. I am not worthy to be crucified that way. What did these people know? That in the midst of their depression, Paul will write a letter encouraging people and Paul will say, I'm in chains. In chains. A man in chains telling people, count it all joy, my brethren. 
when you go through diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith walk in patience in chains you are not in chains yet we are depressed please i want you to i want you to weary satan with your passion for jesus christ weary satan with your passion for the things of god oh i wanted to give you ten thousand i no longer will give you say to god be the glory and he said what kind of person are you is it that you don't get angry you have sustained a system for as long as god is alive i remain peaceful my depression will start the day someone can dethrone him and then at that point i know that my life is no longer secure listen the oldest man on earth today is not up to 120 years so what is the vanity are we together the vanity in this life that makes us to get up you are pursuing car you are pursuing jeep you are pursuing this you are pursuing that oh they said in the village i'm not successful let me prove to them who cares are they successful they in the village are they successful They said they don't marry fast in our family. That's their cup of tea, frankly speaking. See, learn, learn to, learn to ignore Satan. It's one way to conquer him. Ignore his proposals and you will step into a state of rest. Someone looks and says, have you gotten the admission? Say, why now? Ah, say, God is faithful. I know that he makes all things beautiful in his time. They say, oh, forget that, you know, you are disappointing us and you, you leave them away. And when you go, the devil will say, think on these things. And you say, no. The Bible says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, if there be a good report, if there be any praise, he said, think on these things. This unemployment, why are we like this? And then you turn to your friend and say, why are we suffering like this? The friend say, Ataya, oh, Naso, Nigeria, they know. You are, you are thinking like a non-Christian. The peace of God. See, let me tell you what will happen if you are living in peace. Men must hate you. Because, you see, there is a popular saying that misery likes company. When people are frustrated, they try to look for those who are like them. So that they can form a team. We, the committee of humiliated people. And the moment you refuse it, they interpret it as pride. What are you saying? Are you not older than us? At least me, I'm 28. You, you are 32. You are not depressed. You are not joining us in this. I'm, I'm not joining. I'm not a party to all of this. Five years after graduating, no job. You won't come. Let's discuss this thing. Say, no, I'm not a party to all of this. Are you willing to be that different? To ignore the mockery and maintain the peace of the kingdom? There's too much depression in our world. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. The person who is depressed, humanly speaking, does not even have any guarantee whether he will wake up the next day. Yet he's thinking. People have accident under the... Me, thank you. Depression makes them to begin to hallucinate. They think the road is this way, whereas it's this way. They go and bash into a tree and die. See, I, I thought I saw the bend this way. Frustration. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. I remember a man whose car had accident. When he came and saw the car burning, he fell down there and died. If that guy gets to heaven and I'm Jesus, this is the first thing I'm going to do. I'll say, what brought you here? And he said, I died. I said, of what? He said, car. I would say, go back. He must go back. 
for that you must win at least a thousand souls <laughs> oh no come on you don't die and enter the gates of heaven if i'm jesus you must go back and win souls one by one not general one by one you die because your car caught fire They stole your cloth from January. You are still remembering it now. See, listen, do you let me tell you something? Anything you hold on to, you are telling God, This is the limit of my life. Don't ever lift me beyond this limit because at this point, this has become my God. I love him. You never hear me pray all those nonsense prayers. Oh God, why me? Why all of these things? Why, uh, oh God, won't you, won't you? No, 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 no. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus, Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. anxiety and this rage right have you seen friends do this I, I believe you don't do it um, Christians should not do that but there are friends that do that um, they deliberately look for trouble they keep saying things and instigating anger and then they laugh there are people who if they laugh at you there is a way they laugh at you do, do you have such kind of people in your life oh my goodness they laugh at you in a way that you, you don't you, you 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 try to check is it that i'm stupid am i a clown what is the meaning of all this if you live your life like that there are many of those kinds of people around the world you will hate yourself and you will translate that hatred to every other person around you i love myself god knows i love myself I've, I've said it again and again here that philosophy of hanging yourself even if i were not born again it would never happen to hang myself no i'd rather die in a sleep but not to hang myself who buys the rope <laughs> me go to the market and buy a rope to hang myself <laughs> say i choose to be peaceful Shout it, I choose to be peaceful. I, to be peaceful. I, make, up I make up my mind to be a person of peace. Go home with this mindset and see how you will discomfort a lot of people. Because for some of you, they are waiting for you. There is a part of the gist that has been, it's like a pie. They left it for you. They are hoping that you come. And they say, come and tell us your version of the suffering in Nigeria. And they say, well, I... I have just one thing to say god is faithful and i say please please let's be real we're also christians he said this is my reality i mean it I'm, I'm not playing games and then they get angry right people always get angry when you don't conform i once met a woman who was angry said that she's been barren for a number of years and um, this was woman. She said, I went to the hospital. They said I'm okay. They said I'm okay. It's my husband that knows what A and B and C and, and you know I don't want to. He has this whole medical this in and all of that. He's the one. Blah 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 blah. From his father's side, from this and that. And I knew that this woman will not carry a child for a long time with this bad attitude. There, is, the kingdom cannot come because there is no peace. It's an equation. There must be righteousness. There must be peace and there must be joy. When these three cohabit it grants access it's like a spiritual code hallelujah and i looked at the woman i said madam the issue is not to throw blames and say it's your husband two have become one that's what the bible says if he gets money now will you say it's his money or will you say it's our money see that and i encourage and pray with her I give unto you. I don't know what you are going through right now, but
but let me tell you i don't want to know one thing i know is that your way out must be the way of peace depression will never bring you solution are we together worry and discussing issues with people who cannot help you will not bring you out jesus said john 14 please 27 my peace i give to you my peace i give unto you the bible says one of the names you will be called is the prince of peace not the prince of worry look at jesus on the cross going through the pains of the nail and then he looks at john and says john behold your mother mother behold your son what kind of peace is that a 33 year old man naked on the cross he would have been angry look at stephen when they were about to stone him he looked into heaven the only guy that did what jesus did was advocating forgiveness for the people that's a state of peace may god make you a man and a woman of peace i'm telling you in plenty it does not change you in not plenty it does not change you right when people annoy you and instead of you boiling around you just find a song of melody in moments like this i sing out a song i sing out a love song to jesus in moments like this i sing out a song i sing out a song to the lord singing i love you lord singing i love you lord singing i love you lord i love you some of us are going to be going home let me tell you what some of you will meet in your house. Poverty like never before. It's not a prophecy. Some of you, that's, that's the truth. You will go home and they will tell you, they've not paid workers for months. And then you can choose to join them in the depression or be an instrument of peace. And say, look, I know that things are not going all right now. But I tell you, a day will come when we will rejoice in this house. They say, where is that day? We are talking of now, now. Some of you, the moment your parents see you, they'll be angry because they're thinking of school fees. And you tell them, no, God is faithful. Right? Some of us are going back to our loved ones. And we may not have anything much in our hands to go and bless them at home and we're depressed. It should never be so. You choose peace. Never allow Satan depress you. The Lord put this in my heart to share with us tonight. I'm going to prophesy and bless us for the year. But I want everyone here, those listening outside, let nothing be so serious in this life such as to disrupt your peace. There is a childlikeness you must have if you want to live into this world. Some of us are too matured for God to use us. We are too, we are too bossy. We are too old. We are not childlike enough. I choose to be a child before his presence. I will be a child with my children and my grandchildren. I will still remain a child in his presence. To tremble at his word. Nothing is too serious in life to depress me. Nothing is too serious in life to make me hate people and get depressed all around. No joy, no peace, no. I teach you the art of living. I teach you the way winners live. The key is to hand over everything to God. I'm rounding up. I know you think you are born again, but let me tell you, when worry still kills you, you are not truly born again. There is a part of you that has not been surrendered to him.
from beginning to the end it will always be always be you jesus oh jesus you gave him your joy you gave him your spiritual life you gave him your prayer life but your financial life you left away from him and that's where the devil is using to kill you because you've not handed it over we are going to do a handover ceremony where you will take every aspect of your life and say god i'm tired if it's based at me, i would do this marriage issue will kill me this job issue will kill me this barrenness issue i hand it over listen he said come on to me all ye that are what weary and heavy laden what did he say i will give you rest do you have it do you have that rest koinonia do you have that rest today if you have it it will tell in your life if you have it it will tell in your lack of desperation for mundane things oh when will this come oh when will this no 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 i can't wait for tomorrow i can wait i can wait there is no hurry about it i can i can wait for tomorrow to come ah no i can't wait for tomorrow i just can't wait why why the only thing i cannot wait for is anything that has to do with the kingdom every time i get up on fridays when i'm around i, I almost cannot wait for evening because i want to be able to bless the people any other thing that is not direct so winning no i can't be that desperate about it i can wait can you wait for the car to come answer me some of you can't wait can you wait for the car to come can you wait for the husband to come can you wait for the wife to come can you wait for the promotion to come all the days of my appointed time i will until my change comes if you force a door to open that god did not open it will open but it will open and kill you oh i choose to wait i choose to wait the bible says he makes all things beautiful not in your time in his time he has the clock right and if you will wait for him he will beautify your life some of you cannot wait to get into ministry that's why you would die like a chicken the first person you prayed for they beat you and say don't come around our house again because god is saying wait he said no my blood is hot calm down calm down I choose to wait I choose to experience that peace there are three prayer points we are going to pray desperately tonight and then I'll prophesy over our lives and we'll be done this is the message that I want us to close coin on with the first prayer point is a prayer point of handover let me explain it and then we'll pray that you get to a point come where you take your life and donate it to God Lord I'm tired of this trouble he said my yoke is easy the one you are carrying is not easy that means it's not of God my yoke is easy and my burden is light will you hand it over to God and say Lord I'm tired of depressing myself This is my conviction. I am a complete servant of God. If my reputation goes bad, he's the one to receive it. If God honors me, he's still the one to receive it. Are we together? If I lack food to eat and I don't have the energy, no soul winning, no salvation, who pays the price? If there's food to eat, I make God responsible for my life. I play my own part of the deal and I don't I never dapple into his part it's God's part Lord I leave it to you I have done my own part of faithfulness I know you are you are too faithful and then you rest we're going to hand over you know let me tell you how to know the area you've not handed over to God the one you think about all the time the one you are obsessed about and you are almost dying about god is not yet lord of that area 
Are we, are we ready to pray? Rise up on your feet, everyone. Please, I want everybody to pray. Pray seriously. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and cry. Mention the areas in your life that cause you sorrow and depression and say, Lord, I hand it over to you. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. I hand it over to you, oh God. I'm tired of killing myself. I'm tired of dying slowly. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh. Now turn it into a prayer. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Rekete kababa shatalabaka. Father, I lay aside every financial worry. Pray. I lay aside every worry about job. I lay aside every worry about children, every worry about ministry. I choose peace. I choose peace. I reject worry. I choose peace. Oh, you make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside the still waters. Kabarakato shekete lebo, embro koto poske shekete, shekete le koto stope kete, embro kaba baka prateska na ba ya na ba na ba. Make sure you're praying. You are the Prince of Peace, and I've received you in my life. I receive your peace. I receive your peace in this wicked world. I receive your peace. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says, casting all your cares upon him. For what? He cares. That's the second prayer point. Listen. Don't think God does not know that life is full of troubles. Are we together? He's called the ancient of days. Don't think he's not aware of your challenges, but he still, he still tells you, my peace I give to you. The second prayer point is you are going to lay aside every trouble. Bring it before him and say, Lord, this is what is disturbing me. This is that which is troubling me. I, I bring it to your throne. Lift your voice and pray. I bring it before your throne. Oh, I bring it before your throne. I exchange my burden for your burden. I exchange my yoke for your yoke. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. Lord, that which I've been carrying is killing me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
the last prayer point listen the last prayer point is a cry from your heart you're going to cry and say lord i lose affection for anything that is not you i i can use them but they will never win my heart lift your voice and pray i lose affection for money i lose affection pray pray lord i give you my heart i give you my soul i live for you alone every breath that i take every moment i'm away i lose affection money will never depress me pray i lose affection that loss for material things that loss for faith that loss for power that loss for accomplishment i lose it i break away from 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 it away from it everything I've held on to the last prayer point let's add one more the spirit of depression worry anxiety it is of the devil open your mouth and curse it open your mouth and curse it I reject you in my life I reject you in my family I reject you in the name of Jesus I reject worry I reject anxiety. I reject depression. In the name of Jesus. Shabakata la barara rabos. Lekete proskete. Enkretos koto lekete. Rekete kete lebo koto prege de bela de bos. Rekete ke rebo to supradish. Lekete kete tete mo kopre de kete. reject it reject it from your destiny my god is faithful my god is faithful i refuse depression nigeria will not make me depressed the government will not make me depressed the economy will not make me depressed the happenings around my life cannot make me depressed i reject depression God is faithful. My God is alive. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus, sing Savior. He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. time
all the gentlemen say after me in the name of Jesus I will be a man of peace my home will be your peace I reject depression I reject worry I reject frustration I embrace the peace of God peace above money peace above fame peace above prestige peace above accomplishments this must be your understanding you must embrace the peace of God above and beyond every other thing I want to prophesy to you in closing Hosea chapter 12 verse 13 help us media Hosea 12 13 this will be the last service for the year many of us from tomorrow will be traveling you cannot ignore the place of prophecy it says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved listen when Israel cried in Egypt God did not go to them to rescue them God went to a man and said are you hearing my people cry are we together God would have gone to Egypt and said, okay I have come but God went to a man and left the salvation of the people in the hand of a man it says by a man by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt right he says and by a prophet was he israel preserved listen one of the greatest revelations i've had this year is understanding the operation of the body of christ the bible says that the church give us ephesians chapter 2 please let's just look at that one scripture I'm about to prophesy to you and I need you to have this understanding Ephesians hmm. let's look at 19 and 20 19 and 20 quickly please Ephesians 2 19 now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and he said all of you are members of the household of God right 21 okay 20 he says and are built upon what the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone listen you must understand how God built the body he said the moment you get born again there are two ministries you must encounter if your destiny must arise he says you must encounter these foundational ministries the ministries of the apostles and the prophets it's not about human worship it's how god built the kingdom he said it is built upon this truth foundation there means upon this truth this revelation it's called the foundation of the Lord. He said, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord does what? Stand sure. You can't change it. It stands sure. So by a prophet, every time people cry, God never comes to them. He comes to them through a man. Go and read your Bible. When there was famine, God came to a man. There are human beings that God has sent that hold the prayer points of people that carry anointings that can open the destinies of people but the bible tells us that you have a role to play let's look at that one scripture second chronicles 2020 20, right your job is to believe second chronicles 2020 20. he said believe in the lord your god so you shall be established but it's not enough to just believe in God. He said, believe in his prophets. He didn't say the prophets. Believe in his prophets. So shall he make progress. So shall he do well. 
so shall he prosper see this is the formula don't try to create another one you will punish yourself for nothing the church was built on the foundations every time god hears the cry of a people he goes to a man and he says you heard their cry i thought god will come to egypt by himself but he went to moses when creation was crying in sin jesus had to become a man because they searched and no man was righteous enough so jesus became a man even god did not come directly he had to become flesh are you not seeing how it works when the revelation of the of the new testament was to come to the body a man had to be found in the name of apostle paul and he brought that fellowship of the mystery to the body of christ when satan wants to destroy you he will make you believe in god and disrespect his prophets are you seeing that he won't tell you to stop believing in god you say believe in god after all everybody has equal access to god and you will fool yourself and see that you are praying and fasting but nothing is happening when the widow in Zarephath was in trouble god went to a man immediately and said i have commanded you go are you not seeing it when samaria was in trouble i thought god would have gone to them he never went to the lepers he brought in a man and he said by this time the moment the man spoke god looked for lepers in other words the tool god will use is not necessary let the prophecy just come he can use anything an axe head can float back when a stick comes but it must be at the instruction of the prophet he said alas master for it was borrowed and he said where fell it if that man threw a stick nothing would happen but he did it at the word prophecy is powerful i learned this from god's servant bishop david Oyedeko. he has changed the lives of people with prophecy but it only works to them that believe you don't receive a prophetic word from a colleague you don't receive a prophetic word from a friend I've taught it here there are individuals that are not pure human beings lift your hands God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me God's ability One more time, God's ability. God's ability. Hallelujah. I've shared with you again and again my visions. How that I saw an endless sea of people, and they were crying, no food, no water. And I said, who is the cause? And they pointed at me. Ah, and I was afraid because some people had chased me to come into that small room where I was hiding. And I made up my mind. I said, I was still going to go out and rescue them. If I perish, I perish. The moment I opened the door, I saw a giant. And he held my hands. And he said, I will walk with you. Brothers and sisters, this is not, it's not about human beings or human boasting. It's about God's spiritual system arguing it is foolishness there are many prisoners today paying the the foundation of the lord and the bible says that foundation is the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic i want to speak over your life listen the year is not too late for God to finish what he said he would do are we together oh no come on we have at least 20 more days it doesn't take time is it not a prophet of God that said by this time tomorrow it doesn't take time it's, it's only unto men according to their faith don't say it's the end of the year
God does not work with human calendar. He works with his word. The moment the word of God comes, he said, he said, let there be. And there was. In the name that is above all names, I prophesy over your life. Every package that is meant to come into your destiny in this year of the rain that is yet to be delivered, I prophesy it into your life right now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy it into your life right now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy it into your life right now. In the name of Jesus. Every request you have dropped here from January, February, March, April, May, and now it's December, and it looks like God has failed you. Let me prophesy to you that by 31st of December, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will be holding your testimony. I prophesy to you that by 31st of December, you will be holding your testimony. It may not be possible with men, but the Bible says with God. We are involving God in this talk. Every level of prosperity you should have entered in this year of the rain. And for whatever reason, and by any means, you have not entered it. Let this next 20 days, days of supernatural supplies. hallelujah that spirit that destroys men towards the end of the year that people would have labored have you seen obituaries 28 december 29 december some even 31st in the name that is above all names may a seal of longevity come upon your life may a seal of longevity come upon your life i forbid death from coming towards your habitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the frustration you usually face at home there are some of us December times are times of pain poverty this December will be the best you have ever had I prophesy this December will be the best you have ever had in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has troubled your heart, everything that has brought tears to your life, you cannot even share with people because of the pains I prophesy to you. Tonight, the Prince of Peace is stepping into that situation. I declare unto you the Prince of Peace is stepping into that situation. Every challenge in your health, every sickness, I don't care what it is, that has refused to go this night in the name of Jesus, we challenge it and we command it to live your life forever. We command it to live your life forever. A dimension of favor you did not see from January to November. I decree that you will have it beginning from this night. I prophesy it again beginning from this night. Not tomorrow, this night. May that dimension of favor come over your life in the name of Jesus. Everything you are praying for is restoration. There are people who have lost things and you are trusting God. You are saying, Lord, before the end of the year, let a miracle come. The Bible says they are taking for a prey and none say it restore. In the name that is above all names, 
I prophesy restoration for you. I prophesy restoration for you. In a way and a manner that you have not heard. Listen. Did you hear the testimony of Pastor Femi and his family? 18 years. Even if it's 1,000, they are paying you every month. At the end of 18 years, you will have something to smile enough with. If your salary was 100,000, calculate it times 18 years plus benefit and allowance. That kind of restoration in the name that is above all names, may it come upon your life tonight. I prophesy to you, receive that restoration right now. The testimony that you need to take home as an evidence that this was the year of the rain for you the testimony you must hold and tell people look this is a symbol of god's faithfulness i release it upon your hand right now i release it upon your hand right now in the name of jesus christ may you be a burning and a shining light in the name of jesus christ through your hands many will be healed through your hands many will be saved i place an unction of the almighty upon you that as you go back to your various locations and stations you will come back with a harvest of dramatic testimonies in the name of jesus christ next year for you will be a it will be a balance brought forward of everything everything in the years past that have refused to come it will be a balance brought forward for you in the name of jesus christ listen it is still the year of the rain are you hearing me it is still the year of the rain and i prophesy to you whatever the rain represents within these few weeks we have to the end of the year may you experience the full revelation of what the rain represents hallelujah any human upon the face of the earth who is holding the key to your blessing the key to your breakthrough in the name that is above all names from the north to the south the east and the west between now and 31st december by prophecy i call them into your life by prophecy i call them into your life in the name of the lord jesus christ samuel told saul he said as you go back you will find out that the donkey that has been missing has been found and then he said you will see three men you will see them holding bread they will give you from the bread whoever is holding what is supposed to be given to you whatever resistance and manipulation from hell is stopping them from releasing it i command that between now and the end of the year it comes into your hands in the name of jesus christ I pray for every family represented here the kind of Christmas celebration you have never seen from birth in the name that is above all names may it be experienced this December whatever ties away financial supplies from your families during this festive period so that they celebrate Christmas like frustrated people I decree and I prophesy in the name of Jesus may it be a different one this time around for those of you who are going to be traveling far and wide we declare that the mystery of the blood goes with you all through in the name of Jesus Christ in one minute I like you to ask everything remaining that you want God to do please in one minute go ahead I'm releasing my faith with you in one minute every other thing you are trusting God for don't say it can't happen open your mouth and pray oh I release my faith 
I release my faith. One can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. Open your mouth and place a demand on the faithfulness of God. Lord, I still believe you. Pray. Tell him, I still believe. Today is the 11th of December, but I still believe. It says unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come i agree with you that whatever you have declared before god may it become a testimony in the name of jesus christ hallelujah let me make an altar call quickly please i like everybody to be around this is our last service i'll make some announcements there are people inside and outside this is the last service you probably were here from january february and every time you hear an altar call like this something resists you from coming out maybe you've never experienced this peace with this prince called jesus or probably there are some of you who have given your hearts to the lord but at one point or the other you found yourself derailing this is our last service let this be the service where you give up on yourself and embrace his majesty i'll count one to five wherever you are i believe that there are still people outside there are still people inside please leave your seats don't wait for anybody to come before you make your way to the front right now one i count one to five wherever you are god bless you as you come they are coming there are people coming from inside and outside clear the way for them god bless you god bless you god bless you don't be ashamed this is the last service for the year. Let it be that at the last Koinonia service, you make a decision for Jesus. The next will be again will be 2016. Don't enter 2016 on sale. God bless you as you come. There are some people God is speaking to outside. Make your way and receive this Prince of Peace. He will change your life forever. hallelujah I salute all of you who are coming the Prince of Peace the Prince of Peace is all you need in your life and a simple prayer of faith if you are coming please come and join them clear the way for them come and join them God bless you the devil is a liar don't let any devil stop you as I'm talking if the Holy Spirit is still speaking to you make your way I know time is up but you need to be saved make your way to the front in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the Prince of Peace listen he will bring beauty and glory out of your life it doesn't matter what you have done men can condemn you but let me tell you something the mercy of God that throne of grace and mercy is always there he will wipe your sins as if it never happened that's the mercy of God I'm going to lead you to a prayer and I want you to pray passionately from your heart you are not reciting a poem praise the lord pray it from your heart you are talking to a real person his name is jesus and as you pray that prayer a miracle will happen to you and you will leave here tonight having the greatest gift any man can have lift your right hand high above your head so that the devil doesn't think you are pretending and say after me lord jesus i believe in you I know you are the son of God and I believe I ask you tonight forgive my sins cleanse me from all unrighteousness I cry for your mercy I'm tired of living my life my own way this night I make up my mind before your people that you are the Lord of my life I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that the power of sin is broken over my life let me pray for you father these hands that are lifted receive them and let this be the beginning of a real encounter in their lives 
I break the power of sin over your life and every voice that speaks judgment I declare that the throne of mercy silences that voice forever in the name of Jesus you stand before his presence as though you never sinned having the righteousness of his dear son Jesus Christ that's the gift he gives you for believing in him and I supply grace upon you to live the victorious Christian life this will not be an emotional decision for you to go back to the flesh from today you rise higher and higher never to go down again in the name of Jesus Christ I welcome you to the greatest family on earth God's own family in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now there is a lady waving her hands I'd like you to just walk up to her she'll have your details and will follow you up from the details so please make sure you supply your details God bless you celebrate them as they go celebrate them koinonia 